Hey everyone! In this video I am making a tiny wood shack using Tim Holtz Paper Village dies. Ever since they came out I have seen comments saying that they are too small for detailing and you know me, I love my details. So this video is kind of a challenge accepted to show that these tiny cute houses can be just as detailed as their bigger brothers, the original village dies and the new village collection. And isn't it adorable? I used only the first paper village die set, I don't have the second one yet, it's on its way. And also I think it's fun to see how far you can get with only this one set. To build the house I combined two bases using the small house dies and two of the tall narrow ones to create this cute irregular shack. I like using liquid glue especially on the base, it gives the final structure much more stability which is important if you're gonna fiddle around with it as much as I do. I added one tower to the back of the house and the second tower right onto the roof of the base house. This gives the house this whimsical look I was going for. I made sure to cut a hole in the roof where I added the tower. And you'll see me do the same where I added the tower in the back of the house. That's in order to unify the inner space because I plan on adding lighting. We'll get to that in a little bit. To make the connection of the back tower smoother, I cut into its back and glued it down diagonally. I also added a tiny dormer. This is not a die, I just build enough houses to get how they work. And in such a tiny house, it's really just a folded roof and a little triangle. And that's all you need. I used distressed wood grain paper and started by going over it with some archival ink just to catch the ridges. Because it's oil based, archival ink resists the water based distress inks that I'll use afterwards, and that helps keeping the details of the wood grain visible. This isn't a perfect resist, but I definitely think it helps with the texture. To color the paper I used Distress and Oxide inks. I listed the specific colors in the description if you're interested. To finish, I added some drips with fried burlap oxide spray. It has this green undertone that is great for old moldy looking wood. Then it was time to cut some wood panels. I decided to use the decal trimmer. This is definitely a style over realism choice. If you're building a house, you're going to use straight edged planks. But the decal edge gives it so much character and it gives the house this old shack feel that I was going for, so decal trimmer it is.
Before covering the wall, I added some vellum to the windows. This will help diffusing the light and hide its source. Once that was done, I could start gluing thin strips of wood grain paper all around the house, overlapping just a little bit, until the walls were covered. If you've seen my video on making the Halloween house, you know that I usually add the texture on a second die cut of the walls. But with the wood paneling, I feel that it's not necessary, because the overlapping strips of wood texture give the walls enough strength. So I usually glue the panels straight onto the house base. I carefully added the wood panel around the windows, making sure to leave space for the frames I'll add later. This was easily one of the longest parts of the make, but I think it's worth the time and also it's pretty relaxing once you get into it. After all the walls were covered, I brushed some crayons on the house to give the structure more depth and character. I wanted wood pattern for the window frames, but because they're so small, I thought it would be better to use flat pattern rather than 3D texture. So I used a trick that Tim Holt showed a couple of weeks ago, using a brayer to transfer the texture of wood grain paper to a plain cardstock. He used inks, I used paint because I wanted the pattern to stand out on the black cardstock that I was using. I rolled the brayer in paint and then rolled it over the wood grain paper. This transfers the pattern to the brayer, so when I rolled it on the black cardstock, it basically stamps the pattern from the texture. Once I had the pattern ready, I cut out the window frames. I used a window die from an old snow globe set that Tim released a few years back. I discovered that they fit perfectly to the size of the Paper Village houses. It's always a good idea to look through your older dies, you never know what matches you'll find. For the round windows, I created a frame with two round dies that come in the Paper Village set. I used the smaller circle to cut the windows in the base, so for the frames I just used the bigger circle, then cut out the smaller one out of it, and the frames fit perfectly. And before we move to the roof, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button so I'll know to make more of these and to help it reach more people. I decided to go with the thatch roof. It seemed fitting with the forest shack idea and gave a lot of texture and interest. I used sisal. Um, I bought some sisal rope a while back for my cat's scratch post. And when I needed to change the rope, I realized that the fried old one was a perfect craft material. And I used it in ton of things since then. See, cats can be helpful in crafts. Sometimes. Unintentionally. Anyways, I used the fried sisal for straw and sewed bunches of it together before gluing them in layers over the rooftops. Sewing the bunches gave me more control on how the roof looked and more stability for the structure as I added the layers. I combined natural color sisal with sisal that I dyed black for more depth, interest and that lovely feel of an old roof.
For the very top of the roof, I sawed together bunches of sisal to a sort of rectangle and then folded it over to cover the ridge. At this stage I also added a little awning above the door, it really adds a lot of character. Once the glue was completely dry, I brushed some crayons over the roof, just like I did on the walls. It really adds depth to the whole thing. A tiny house is not complete without a tiny chimney. The first paper village does not come with chimneys, so I decided to go extra quirky and add funny little metal chimneys using a wood skewer. I wanted one of the chimneys to have an angle, so I used a nail file to file down the edges of the skewer to about 45 degrees and glued the parts together. I used an alcohol marker to paint the base black. Alcohol ink often leaves just a little bit of shine that I thought would work great for metal. I topped each of the chimneys with a little bread. I just cut it to a fitting length and glued it down. And then added some copper wax to finish the chimneys before gluing them to the roof. To finish the house I added some moss all over it and then it was time to work on the base. This house was built to fit into one of Tim Holtz's little display domes. And because the base is cork, it was fairly easy to just cut out a hole for the LED tea light I planned on using for lighting. I used my craft knife to cut out a hole in the cork that fits the candle base. For a bigger house, I might have needed tiny lights or fairy lights to reach the tower windows. But for such a small house, one tea light does a great job. And I do love the flickering of the light. I decided to remove the translucent flame tip from the tea light. It's there to diffuse the light, but the vellum that I put on the windows already does that, and I didn't want to reduce the light intensity. And that's about it. I added a piece of craft cardstock on the top to cover the white plastic of the tea light, glued the house down, and was ready for tiny yard making. I used some of the cork I cut out of the base to create some rocks and variation in the ground height, and then painted all the base in dark brown. Then I used liquid glue to add bunches of grass. The cork layers made it easy to add the flowers. I made a whole bunch of these before, and because I already made a video showing how, I skipped it this time. But I'll put a link to it in the description if you're interested.
the final touch were a few butterflies. I colored a bit of vellum with alcohol markers and die cut these tiny tiny butterflies. Then I added details to the body and wings with a very fine pen and they were ready to find a home on this tiny shack. I hope you like this tiny shack and that I convinced you that no house is too small for detailing. If you enjoyed this, come check out my weekly miniature making live stream every Thursday at 7 p.m. CET. I'd love to have you there. And thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to hear what's your experience with tiny houses, paper village or not. So let me know in the comments what you think and if there's anything you'd like to see. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.